to enjoy it because it is over in a flash. And um, and I learn so much from the children um, every year, the way they look at Christmas. And Christmas through their eyes is just, there's no other beauty. That's Rebecca McNeil, our guest today on Completely Booked. I'm Amanda. And I'm Gabby. The holiday season is here, so today we're going to help you and your family get organized for your upcoming celebrations. Rebecca is a very passionate preschool teacher at Riverside Presbyterian Day School who is also in tune with the needs of the children in our lives. She is also a mother and just an all-around wonderful resource to the Jacksonville community, and like so many of us, she loves the holidays. So today we sit down with her and explore ways to help children understand the concept and history of Christmas and the many ways people celebrate. And we also chat about the many things you can do to get your child excited about the holidays, like creating advent calendars and other fun little projects to do. We also touch on a new approach to buying gifts called the Want, Need, Wear, and Read. It is an idea that has become so popular over the last few years. The concept is mostly about buying less quality over quantity, and not feeling like we have to cram the tree with tons of gifts. Of course, we talk about top holiday books you can check out at the library, but we also talk about things to do with your children during the holiday break. So hopefully you can find a tip or two in this podcast to help make your holidays a little less stressful. So without further ado, here's our holiday podcast with Rebecca McNeil and happy holidays. Welcome back, Rebecca. We are so excited to have you back on Completely Booked. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. It's getting to be that time of year where everybody's busy with holidays and running around to families' houses. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of explore ways to talk to our kids about Christmas and how Christmas means more than gifts and time off from school. Yes, I know. We all get involved and we start thinking, you know, it's kind of kind of coined the phrase gift miss instead of Christmas and and we can easily get caught up in that and so I'm really thankful to get the chance to talk and share with people that you know Christmas is not all about just oh my gosh let me check all the boxes so you know Christmas is just it's just like you said it's a wonderful time of the year it's holidays it's family and really if you really talk to children or especially now that people that are adults and you say, what do you remember about Christmas? They don't ever say, oh, I remember the year I got that new Tinker Toy set. I mean, they don't, that's not what they remember. They remember, oh, well, we used to go to Aunt Sue's house. And she had that special candy that was always in that dish, but you knew not to touch the dish until Aunt Sue said it was okay. You know, those are the things that we remember about Christmas. So, Definitely. Yeah. And it can be hard with children that are so little, like in that pre-K or younger realm. How do you kind of explain, you know, what the holidays are all about to kids that are that little? Well, you know, there's so many different ways to celebrate. And I think that that's one thing um, you as a family need to decide, you know, what is going to be important? What is going to be important to us and how are we going to celebrate? And that's kind of cool to get the chance to pick your traditions and um, traditions is a really good parenting strategy. Um, so for young children, you know, I teach three and four year olds, you know, I explain how other countries celebrate Christmas. I explain, you know, for, you know, Christians, we celebrate the birth of Christ. Um, there are other fam- you know, and there are other families that the most important thing to them might be just the decorating of their house and getting ready and baking cookies. Everybody kind of has a different picture of what Christmas is to them. But I think it's the one time a year when um, it's great to be able to talk to young children about love and peace and kindness. And um, it's just, it's just, you know, there's just the awe in it. And um, so, you know, I know that, you know, in different countries, you know, they do different things to, you know, Santa Claus. Santa Claus has so many different names. Um, and that's one thing, you, you know, I'm going to plug. Um, we're so blessed here in Duval County to have so many wonderful libraries. And all the libraries have some really great books on, you know, different ways and um, to celebrate and the different ways that um, different countries celebrate. And one I found was really cute was called A World of Cookies for Santa. And it kind of gives the name of each Santa Claus. It talks about what the children do. And, um, you know, like in Holland, they put out their shoes. Um, in Mexico, you know, they just get candy. 
I mean, you know, they get candy in their shoes. And um, so, I, you know, I think that books are a great way to use and, you know, y'all know me. I'm going to plug those books. So, um, you know, books are, you know, just they're our friends. And use the books because as many years I've, you know, done Christmas and holidays, I don't want to admit how old I am, um, you know, I learn something every year about a different way to celebrate. And um, I was sharing um, with some friends that last year we started a new tradition in our family and we took it from Iceland. And I hope this is correct. I'm not going to pronounce what it's called because I will really mess the word up and I don't want to do that. But it's the festivity. It's called the Christmas Yule Book Flood. And what they do is on Christmas Eve, they gift books to each other. And then in, in Iceland, I believe they have uh, hot chocolate. But what we did in our family was everybody got a wrapped book. And we tried, we were really, it was so much fun to like go and find a book for that person that would fit their personality. It was really neat. to, And you actually found out more about the person. You, know, you think you know your family. Well, you don't always know them that well. <laughs> but, um, and so we had wrapped books for everybody at Christmas Eve dinner. And on top was a chocolate bar. They loved it. I love that idea. So do you get a book for everybody that's at Christmas, or is it more like a secret Santa thing where you pick a name? Well, um, actually, my cousin helped me, So I and she is a bookie, I mean, to the core. She's awesome. And she, we kind of divided the names up in the family, so she did half and I did half. And But we got together, and she and I wrapped them and put the chocolate on top. So it was kind of a nice bonding for us, too. Yeah, that's a wonderful thing. And our kids are older, but I was thinking the beauty of that for young kids would be so great. And then that they would get so excited about getting a book on Christmas Eve. Um, So that's just one thing. And again, like I took that from Iceland. So, you know, back to the question, um, you know, how do you um, explain children to children about Christmas? There's just so much out there and you just have to kind of pick in your family what your traditions are going to be and values and yeah in my family we do white elephant for the adults which started probably as we became adults like around like age 18 because we have a big family and so it was a nice way to still keep the spirit of giving alive but also like not spend so much money you know yeah because i mean christmas can get so expensive like especially when you have a huge family um what are some things that you can do with your young children or even, you know, older kids to get them excited about the holidays? Um, you know, December 1st is right here upon us. And, you know, just an advent calendar of some kind. It can be one that you buy. But there's, um, I saw where um, mother had taken um, two muffin tins and had tied them together. I thought this was so cool because muffin tins are in 12. So 12 and 12 makes 24, counting to Christmas. And she let her child help her, and they cut out pretty Christmas wrapping paper and just kind of glued gently around the outside edge of the hole where the muffin would go, tied them together so you had the set, so counting down, had the child write the numbers, 1 through 24. So there's a teaching moment. Of course, I love that. Mm -hmm. And then... um, then the mom, as the child was helping her cut the circles and glue them on, she kind of would like say, oh, I got a little surprise, and put it in the little muffin tin hole. You know, it can be something simple. It could be a whistle. I mean, yeah, that's going to be fun at Christmas. Um, but, you know, something really tiny, um, you know, a Hershey's Kiss, um, an eraser. It was not any big thing, but it was just the process of making the Advent calendar together. Um, at school, we do um, a pretty picture of the nativity and then we write in the sky 1 to 24, and then every day the children make the calendar, and then the children take it home, and they add stars to it. And then they get a big star for the 25th for Christmas Day. So that's kind of a nice, you know, anything like that that you can do. And now, you know, with all the companies, <laughs> you know, you can buy an advent calendar pretty much for anything, mm-hmm. you know. Um, I think that's a great thing. And then I have a friend that started this when her children were young, and her children are now in their 20s and 30s. But she would wrap a book every day, like the books they already had, or even library books. She would wrap the books up, 25 books. And so every day in the basket sat by the Christmas tree. And so every night, instead of reading in bed or reading at night, 
they'd go to the basket and they got to pick one out. And the kid got to unwrap it. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. And then they got, it was like, wow. And she said what was so funny is like a lot of the books were like 20 years old. They're like, wow, it's like a new book, you know, because it was wrapped. You know, I think that's awesome. Yeah. You know, what a great way to count down, you know. And um, even library books, she would wrap library yeah, books? Yeah. Wow. If she didn't have, like, she tried, you know, she's, she's a teacher also. So mm-hmm. she's kind of like, you know, tried to hit on all the different aspects of Christmas. Like, you know, there are books out there about the history of candy canes. There's the history of the bells. Um, there's, you know, she would share um, traditions in other countries. So she's like, if I didn't have the right book, you know, she would. She'd wrap a library book. Yeah, that's but a wonderful course, idea. Make sure that library book gets back to the library. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, another uh, really cute one that um, a mom actually at uh, the Willow Branch Library shared with me was she said they make like a Christmas tree cutout and they just tape it on the door going in her, I think she said her kitchen. And it's just a brown tree that they cut out and she sits with the children Um during this week, you know, Thanksgiving week, and they make ornaments, like just little paper ornaments. And then on the ornaments, they write what they're thankful for. And I was like, wow, what a great way to combine holidays and really teach children, you know, Christmas isn't all about the gifts and plastic. Right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I thought that was a really great one. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about Santa a little bit. What's kind of the standard that you see amongst parents these days of like the Santa facade having the santa talk <laughs> okay wait santa's not real is that what you're saying <laughs> okay now um <laughs> that is really an area that we're gonna have to be careful with because um as my children at school know and my own children miss mcneil very much believes in santa claus um and i when i say that i say to them i believe in the spirit of santa claus um i love the tradition I love that if you really look at almost any country, even though he has a different name or she has a different name, um, you know, Santa is what your family decides to make it. Um, And one thing that I think is real important is, as I often share with families, you need to listen to your children and what they're talking about and what they are trying to communicate to you. And then you will know the appropriate time that you say, you know what, it's now time for you to help me be the spirit of Santa Claus. Um, That's how we handled it in our family. Um, Not saying that that's the right way. Um, And my children still get very much involved, you know, with the spirit of Santa Claus and what Santa Claus is. Um, He's a pretty cool guy. So... I think that's a wonderful way to approach it. I'm going to totally use that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I definitely believe that, you know, talking about Santa Claus as kids get older, as being more of a, a like a, just the spirit of the holiday, you know, it's not necessarily an embodiment of a person. It's like the embodiment of family and love and like trying to like put that all together. Like that to me is what Santa is. Yeah. No, you're right. You're dead on. And I think, you know, if you really look at all the lovely um, traditions we have right here in Jacksonville where, you know, we have angel trees, we have caring trees, there's a reason for that. It's so important to everyone that they want to carry on and they want everyone to have that feeling of being cared for and loved at Christmas. And one thing, um, you know, I know we have some new parents that listen and you need to be careful what you start um, with your own children as far as how you handle Christmas and how many packages under the tree and all of that. And um, and then also the size of the gifts. Um, I heard someone talking about how that maybe you should save smaller gifts, that those would be the gifts that you would ask Santa to deliver. Um, because then you know, when they go back to school or they're talking, you know, one child saying, well, Santa brought me a, sorry, I don't know what the popular toy is. Um, an this Xbox. Year, an <laughs> Xbox. And then the other child said, well, Santa brought me socks. So that's kind of a hard, you know, that's when it gets sticky for parents and teachers and children. Um, so you might want to think, you know, from the very beginning, if you start that Santa doesn't bring 
so much and get overwhelmed and it, it will save you in the end too. Right, yeah. Um, our tradition was uh, we go with the thought that, um, you know, Jesus was brought three gifts by the wise men. So under our tree, Santa brought three gifts. That that was kind of it. Because then you got grandparents involved and then you know those grandparents are going to do things. And so you got to Got to start it when they're young. Too. Yeah, that's that's an interesting topic. You know, I'm a mom. I have a five year old, so I read a lot of mom blogs, and a lot of parents are shifting towards this gifting process called want, need, wear, and read. And it's more of an approach and a shift towards um, buying less and more quality over quantity, and feeling like we don't have to cram the tree with tons of gifts. Yeah, I think it's great. And I think however you look at it and whatever works for you, um, you know, whether it be, you know, the three gifts of the wise men, you know, the whole idea of, you know, something they want, something they need, you know, I, I love that. Want, need, wear, something to read. I think that's great. Um, you know, I know as our family changed and dynamics change and um, we started doing a family trip. Um because we just wanted time with each other, and that's what was important. Um, so, you know, yes, the stockings were stuffed, and there were still things there, but they, but we weren't so caught up in, is it even? Is it, is it fair? Did we spend $122 there and $122 right. there? You know, that's not what Christmas is yeah, about. Yeah, like, are anyway. there more presents under the tree this year than last year? If there are, yay, we won, you know, like that kind of mindset. And also another thing, and, I, and this is just a sidebar for me, um, you know, I feel like we need to take care of our world and our environment. And I've read a lot about people avoiding plastic at Christmas. Um, and I think some people thought that meant like plastic gift cards. And I do kind of agree with that. I think we just, it's kind of a cop out, you know, just go buy a gift card. I, I don't really like that. Um, because I think that if you truly know the reason for a gift, you think about that, you know, think about that person, something that they would need or want. And then again, you know me, going back to the book, if you can't find something, get them a book. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't, or don't, a don't, trip, an experience. An experience. And ask grandparents. That's a great, you know, grandparents are always worried about what to do. Grandparents that are listening, do something with the grandchildren. Take them somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, do something, you know. Um, and it doesn't have to be something that costs money. You know, we we have a great city, you know, come to the library. Right, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. You know, yeah, definitely. Sorry. The library is going to be doing tons of fun things over the Christmas break. Yeah, just there's um, so much yeah. in our city. There's so many, you know, um, you know, the Festival of Lights in St. Augustine, just, you know, uh, the, um, the Historic Society, the Gingerbread Extravaganza. Um, there's just so much out there. There are tr like train rides. There's, I think there's one in St. Mary's. There's mm -hmm. one, the red train that runs through St. Augustine. Mm -hmm. There's just so many great things. But yeah, it's going to cost a little bit, but um, I just think they, that's going to be what they remember. Yeah, it's going to be a memory. Know, they're not going to remember the latest plastic toy from, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then let's think about our environment. That's a lot of plastic. Yeah, definitely. And with shipping and, I mean, yeah. Just the wrapping paper mm -hmm. one. The Amazon boxes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. You know, we have the countdown on our phone. <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, again, I'm not knocking. I love Christmas. Christmas is so important to me. I I love going to church on Christmas Eve. And um, our church does, they let the children uh, do the nativity, which is a s hysterical. One, it's like, it's just so cute because you'll have 14 Marys and nobody wants to be Joseph. And I think it's funny. Um, and so uh, I love that's part of our tradition, you know, the, the dinners and all that. But back to the gift giving, you, you don't get so caught up in that. So you look forward to the time you get with your family, whether it be in the form of a trip or sitting around the dining room table and sharing, you know, the gift of books or, you know, even white elephant. I think it's all, again, you need to decide, you know, mm -hmm. but take some of the pressure off yourself. Make a decision and stick with it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> totally. Yeah. 
And do you have any tips for parents who want to help teach their children inclusivity and kind of, you know, teaching them about other religions and other holidays that they celebrate, whether it's a parent of a child and their family celebrates Hanukkah, teaching them more about uh, Christmas or vice versa? Like, what kind of conversations do you have with the little ones? Well, I think that's another, it's just such, again, such great teaching moments. You know, um, we, you know, we have fam- we have family members that are Jewish, and I just love the whole lighting of the menorah. And, you know, and I, I apologize. Um, I don't know how Hanukkah lines up this year for us, like the days of, of their um, holy time. So I apologize about that. But I just think that whole idea of sharing that, you know, or if you have a family friend that they celebrate differently, you know, kind of invite yourself. Say, hey, can we come and see how you celebrate? Do you celebrate Kwanzaa? Do you celebrate, you know, um, and then even, you know, visiting different, you know, temples. But whatever it is, it's just such a special time of year. And then the other thing is, I think, is that whole spirit of Christmas is about love and kindness and gratitude and being thankful um, is, you know, volunteer. Go do something, you know, with your family. Um, And again, you have to look at the age of your children. You know, um, again, I talked to a parent and she said, you know, we just go one day and we just pick up trash in the park. But the whole time we're there, we're talking about it. And then we go back and have hot chocolate. It's like, wow, that, that's, I just love that. I just think that, you know, that, that's what we need to be doing more of is spending time helping others and not be so um, me oriented. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that just that whole me is such. Mm. Yeah. So, speaking about that, like, what do you say to a little kid that's like, Mommy, do you think Santa knows I want that gift? Do you think I was good enough that Santa's going to get me that gift? Yeah. That, you know, that whole, are we good enough? Oh, it just breaks my heart. Um, you know, I think, again, it's how you set it up for your children and explain that Santa, gosh, I just hate that children would think that that's, that, that may- gosh, Amanda, that was hard. <laughs> uh, but no, it's such a great question. I want to handle this the right way. I think that all children are good enough. And that's where I, ha- I really struggle because children, it's our job as the adults to take off that, you know, well, my friend got this kind of toy because he's good or my friend didn't get anything. It's really not about that. I mean, and, and you need to say, you know, to your child, Santa loves you for who you are and you know, and he's going to do his very best. But understand, you know, you may not always get exactly what you want, but that has nothing to do with who you are as a person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, yeah, that's hard. Um, and that's, that's what worries me um, with getting so far away from what Christmas is really all about. For sure. Yeah. And um, I have been guilty of it too, but a lot of parents— do use the parenting technique of Santa's watching, you know? So I think that it is, um, wow, well, we're getting kind of deep on this podcast. Aren't we? <laughs> well, you know what? You, you're hitting on something really good, and I, I'm glad it kind of came up because there's this whole thing with the elf. Elf on the shelf? Oh, I don't mm-hmm. have one, but I have seen. And a people, lot of people get so them. caught up in that. And again, it's that whole idea that, you know, he's here to watch you, to report back to Santa, and then. You know, it's getting so elaborate. You know, you got you got parents that are working hard just to make it all work for them. And they're worried about move. Whoops. They're worried about that elf and the magic of that elf. And um, you know, I don't I don't think that's again what Christmas is yeah. about. I mean, you know, great. If you have the tradition of the elf, I said at the beginning of the podcast, you find your own traditions. But he just needs to move. He doesn't need to be bathing in a bowl of marshmallows, drinking hot chocolate. That keep is, it simple. <laughs> keep it simple. Exactly. Let him move. Let him watch. But again, don't put that on your child that, oh my goodness, you know, 
we all are human. We all make mistakes. We're all going to do things. And, you know, if you can find a child out there the next how many days that can keep it all together, wow, I want to see them because there's no way we can't keep it all together. Yeah, I mean, and they can't keep it all together. And that's that's just not fair to, mm-hmm. to, to put that on somebody. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny now that I'm thinking about it. Like the most wonderful time of the year is also the most stressful time of the year in a way. And it is. And that's why I think we as the adults need to decide. You need to just, just keep it simple. Enjoy the things like if your thing is baking, bake cookies with your child. If your thing is going to events, do the events with your child. If your thing is volunteering, volunteer with your child. Any way you can involve your child and spend time, that is the greatest gift you can give your child is time. And there I said it. I mean, that is the gift. Wow, we figured it out. Yeah. Now we, ooh, I just saved y'all all a lot of money. <laughs> time, people. Time. Give time, your kids time. your time. That's it. Um, talking about time, let's talk about how, you know, school's out. There's a lot to do. Um, little kids get tired very easily. What is a good way to keep your kids structured and also have fun during their breaks? I'm really, I am so intuitive when it comes to what little children need and even big children. Um, we really do ourselves a disservice and we really do our children a disservice when we get off of their routine. So I know that a lot of people get um, holiday time, they get vacation time. Yeah, it's okay to sleep late a little bit, but do not start this habit of, okay, we're all sleeping late, we're all going to stay up late, because you're going to pay for it. Um, you really need to keep your child's schedule and structure. Children thrive from structure. They they do so much better. They're better behaved. They they stay healthier. Um, they need to. It, it we get caught up with. Well, we just gonna have some Christmas cookies for dinner tonight. Yeah. You know. Well, yeah, that's fun, but you know that. That, that's not what we need to be doing. And, and I'm not trying to be bah humbug, but we need to stay on our schedule. So, you know, if one night you have a holiday party and we stay up a little bit later, maybe sleep in a little bit, but let's go right back to the normal bedtime. And we just, you know, we just have the time change. That upsets their rhythm. So You would know because you see them all day at school. Yeah. And they're tired. They're Mm -hmm. tired. And they're going to be tired by the time, you know, once they get out from break for break um, and parents are tired. And I really, you'll save yourself a lot of grief if you will, again, remember young children need 10 to 12 hours of sleep a night. Um, You as an adult should be getting eight hours of sleep a night. Um, Yeah. So don't forget sleeping. Don't forget eating somewhat healthy. You can have Christmas cookies. I'm not saying you can't because yeah. I love Christmas cookies. Christmas cookies and eggnog. Yes, but ma'am. also make sure you eat a salad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and can you talk about a few more holiday book titles that are just your all-time favorites? Oh, yay. <laughs> um, I, I, gosh, I, that, that was hard. Um, I wanted so bad to, if I listed all the books, we'd be here forever. But I have to share my all-time favorite book is Mortimer's Christmas Manger by Wilson. Um, They have it. I know I checked. um, It is available at the main library. Um, And I'm not sure what branches have it, but um, it's a beautiful story about a little mouse who uh, gets all involved and sees this Christmas tree and he sees all these goodies and um, and he lives in a damp hole. (laughs) And he's like, ooh. And he ends up finding... um, a, a crush um, to buy the Christmas tree. And so every night he goes out and he moves all the statues of the wise men and everybody. And then he hops into the manger. <laughs> and then he's like, hmm. And then every morning, you know, he gets up and he goes back to his little hole. And then they move all the little figurines around again. And so every night he's like, really? <laughs> so he goes back and he does it again and he sleeps. And then on Christmas Eve, the dad is tell- telling the Christian, the Christian story of Christmas. And, um, and he's like, oh, now I get it. And he looks down at baby Jesus and he goes, oh, 
So you're baby Jesus, and I've been sleeping in your bed. I'm so sorry, and he picks him up and puts him back in the manger. This is precious, and the illustrations are precious. And um, and then at the end, he goes, wow, but there's not a place for me. And um, spoiler alert, then he looks over, and there's a gingerbread house. And so he moves into the gingerbread house. And I just love it, and I just think it's just my all-time favorite. Um, too cute. Yeah. And then there's just so many great. There's um, Counting Christmas, which is a great for younger children by Karen Katz. Um, there is The Spirit of Christmas by um, Tillman, I believe is the author. Um, and then, of course, the classics, like The Night Before Christmas. And now the beauty of it is there's so many because it's a retold story. So there's so many different artists that have done the night before Christmas, and you can find so many of them at your libraries. Um, you know, there's just, it's just the artwork alone. I just get, you know, I love it. Um, and then Brood Off the Red-Nosed Reindeer, too, by May. Um, Elmer's Christmas. I love Elmer the Elephant. <laughs> uh, Pete the Cat. He's mm-hmm. got, they've got, he, you know, uh, Dean, of course, has got Pete's 12 Groovy Days of Christmas. And then one that I just adore, and I read it over and over and over, and I think it's more for myself, is the Llama Llama holiday drama because Llama is being drugged all over town by his mama, and he's just worn out, and it kind of helps us remember what we were talking about. Don't wear your kids out. You know, they need their downtime. (laughs) They need to rest, and um, I just just love it. So, um, again, uh, one of the things I'll tell you is your librarians will help you find books um, ask them. They're they're just such great. They just have so much knowledge. Um, use your librarians. Um, the other is most of our libraries will pull the books and they have holiday sections. So they're already pulled for you. Um, at, uh, Willow Branch is my neighborhood library, which I've already said. Um, there's a whole holiday section and they're already pulled. And Yeah, I mean, you can go on our website and search our catalog for you know, Christmas or holiday books and put any of those books that you want on hold and you can actually even transfer them to your local branch. Yeah. How, how easy is that? Yeah. And yeah. then they'll call you and be like, hey, your books are here. Your books. And, and they have and your you name just on them and a rubber band mm-hmm. and you just walk in and it's, it's like getting awesome. a present. There you go. A free <laughs> present. Love mm-hmm. it. <laughs> Time and library books. We Time figured and library out. Books. Look, we have just solved all your problems. Yeah. <laughs> so share this podcast with all your friends. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, and is there anything else that you would like our listeners to know about the holiday season? Wow. Um, just, you know, now that, like I said, my children are older, um, I just remember the times, you know, just the awe and just you know, just enjoy it and, you know, take some deep breaths and and don't compare yourself to everybody else and don't think, oh, well, that family's doing this and we're only doing that. That's not what it's about. It really isn't. It's just about a time to be together, take breaths, <laughs> um, and, and just enjoy yourself and, and, and let some of it go. You know, just, you know, right now, You know, you've got this time, you know, this week to say, okay, name one or two things you're going to do and all the other stuff, it's okay. Don't, don't get caught up in it. And, um, you know, don't get so caught up in, you know, we all, social media, you know, we all look at it and we all are like, oh, wow, you know, look at their Christmas card. You know, I started get. I think now I send Christmas cards every other year. And I'm really hoping last year was my year. I said <laughs> now that I'm saying this out loud. So um, don't don't worry about that. Just enjoy the time. Be peaceful. Whatever Christmas is to you in your heart, that's what you need to go with. Definitely, yeah. And um, just in case we have any other uh, teachers listening, do you have anything special planned for your class? Oh boy. Um, well, we. Um, we get caught up too, you know, and then I'm here, I'm saying, everybody take a breath. Um, teachers take a breath. Um, it's sometimes um, because children do get off their schedules and things, you know, give them grace. And like I shared at my last podcast, you know, teachers are human. Give them some grace too, because not only are they trying to find the magic for your children, they have families and they're trying to do all that great stuff for their families. Um, I think 
one of the things that we love is um, we make these giant angels, and um, we actually uh, use old books and old hymn books that have been, you know, that are now out of, I guess you'd say, out of service. Um, and we take them and we let the children, it sounds terrible to talk about this, but we let the children tear them and they kind of decoupage this huge angel. They love it. And it's a great activity. It's one of those activities that they can do kind of by themselves. And, um, and they're beautiful pieces of artwork when they come out. And you could do that with a Christmas tree, an angel. I love that idea. Yeah, it's, it's like, easy. Yeah. It's not, you know, and um, but they, they come out beautiful. And you just, after the children have torn and glued, um, then they go back and we use a product called Mod Podge, you know. Mm-hmm. And, they, and they do it. It's And they're gorgeous. Um, that's just one of my favorite projects, I have to say. Um, and then, of course, you know, I, I have books that I check out from the library, but then I have so many. I, we just spend a lot of time laying on the floor and reading books and enjoying it and just, again, just take a breath. And, because, and the other thing is try to enjoy it because it is over in a flash. And, um, and I learn so much from the children um, every year the way they look at Christmas. And Christmas through their eyes is just so much, there's no other beauty. Yeah, I agree. Like, just you know, watching my five-year-old go, like, I'm excited that he's making Christmas crafts at school. I'm like, oh, what'd you make at school today? You know, because I'm working and I don't get to do that with them during the day. And so, like I said on the last podcast, you guys are definitely angels and also very lucky to do that every year with little kids, you know, like you get to see it. And that's special, you know, you get to be this special person in their lives when they're understanding all these different things about the world. And I think that that would be a, a wonderful bonus to being a preschool teacher. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca, for joining us. It was an absolute pleasure having you on. It's my pleasure. And thank you for what y'all do. And thank you for the public life. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Completely Booked this week. We hope you enjoyed hearing all of our holiday tips and recommendations for children from Rebecca. And if you want to find the books that we talked about today on our podcast, be sure to check out our blog at jackspubliclibrary.org. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Jack's Library for updates on future podcasts and all library happenings. Until next time, I'm Amanda. And I'm Gabby. Bye, Bye guys. guys.